Okay, today we're going to talk about the Aspidocalone, which is a giant sea creature. It was first described in a Greek uh, treatise around the second century AD, and it has proliferated and filled the poetic literature and the imagery of the medieval period. And everybody who was doing artwork and writing in the medieval and the Renaissance period knew about the Aspidocalone. And it's basically a giant creature that uh, looks sort of like an island, and you basically pull your ship up to it, you disembark, and uh, you start to uh, camp, and then the thing plunges deep and drowns every one of the sailors who was basically camping there. And so I thought I would do a sort of a traditional medieval version of this, but influenced by a lot of the history. So if you're afraid of sea monsters or sea creatures, this one's for you. All right, the Aspidocalon. So here's the final image that I ended up with, and I'm pleased with it. And like most of my stuff, it looks hundreds of years old. I like that kind of antique. Uh, okay, I'm starting to do the drawing here, and you want to pour yourself out a few fingers of your favorite beverage that always makes the drawing go more smoothly. And um, I basically just started doing some sketching with a, um, a regular ballpoint pen. Sometimes that's kind of a nice uh, feel. It's... Um, you got to commit enough because it's a pen, but it's uh, such a thin line, such a wispy line that it's almost like uh, a really good ske sketching tool. And I started to draw this creature that was like a fish, like a whale, sort of informed by a naive sense of natural history. It's got two spouts on the top of its head, which I really thought was hilarious. And that uh, you see that in some of the ancient or, or some of the uh, medieval uh, imagery. And um, it's basically, uh, the version I'm doing here is more like a fish or a whale type creature, even though uh, sometimes it's described as being more like a turtle. The Aspidocalon was originally um, described in a, a second century book called the Physiologus. And the word comes from two words, the Greek word aspis, which means shield, and kelon, which means turtle. So uh, it was described in this bestiary um, well, it's, it's basically, it's, as I said, it, its original formulation was in the second century, but it took on a lot of importance in the medieval period. And the sort of allegorical, moralizing bestiaries of the medieval and Renaissance period always talked about the Aspidocalone. Uh, the Physiologus is a great uh, book. I highly recommend it. If you can get your hands on it, there's some wonderful translations. It was originally Greek, then translated into Latin. And it basically has like a, an entry, and on each page uh, you'll see like an animal and then some description of its symbolic significance. Here I was trying to sketch like what would a turtle version of this look like, so I did do some sketching. I did like this, but in the end um, I thought it's hard to make a turtle look ominous and monstrous, um, and so I felt like it was still too cute to be the uh, Espidocalone. And uh, I went back to this sort of giant fish image. And so here's the drawing, but I've laid uh, sort of acrylic paint over the top of it using a roller. And that's a technique I've used before. So see my other videos to see how I do that. It's a pretty simple technique and it obscures the drawing. Uh, it kind of hides it and makes the whole thing look much more ambiguous and hard to, to sort of decode or decipher. And I really love that, that quality. So then I've got to pull out the forms and the volume and the structure again once I've gone over it with this roller. So that's what you see me doing here. Uh, I'm using colored pencils mostly and I use a little bit of uh, acrylic paint later in the process. But in any case, the, um, the sea creature is, a, a, you know, has been around forever and we, a lot of us think that it's probably based on the oar fish, which is a real fish, a giant creature that uh, lives deep in the ocean. And it seems to be a source for many sea serpent lore stories. They rise to the surface when they're dying and they breach the surface when distressed. So they look, they've got this head plumage and dorsal fins that uh, seem to be the way that uh, creatures were described. In any case, this was, creature was thought to be a symbol of uh, Satan because Satan lures you to be comfortable and then dives and devours you. So nature is filled with these creatures which are symbolic representations of uh, of the divine drama. 
So here these guys are burning a fire and camping out. Little do they know they're, they're basically about to be sunk with this creature. Please check out my own book on monsters and on natural history of our worst fears. And uh, as usual, if you like these kinds of videos, please hit the subscribe button and the, the notice bell and uh, come back for more. All right. Thanks for watching and take care. Cheers.